Um, who, who do you think is actually going to be favoured in this matchup overall? So, uh, Ecup's the stronger player. He's the professional. He's the guy who does this football. That's what professional does. He does it for a living. So, he will be favoured. But I do think the pressure has switched. So now Ecop's in a position where, oh, I might finally get my big win that people talk about. And Fire's in a position where, oh, I've done what I need to do. I'm now on a free roll. I can, you know, if I get any further, that's fun. If I don't, so be it. But Ecop's now the one under the pressure and Fire has achieved beyond what he expected already. Yeah, and we can see there the bands on the screen. So there's the Warrior and the Shaman band. So that's kind of cool. You know, you see the Shaman band not too, not too often this tournament. It's mainly just all been about the Warrior. But in terms of lineups, uh, who do you think's actually got the, the, the favorable there? Because they're not playing the same decks, right? Right, so Ecop's bringing the standard four decks, but his Warrior is Cthune. Yeah. Fire's got Nazoth Pally. He's got Freeze Mage. He's got Druid. Well, he's got lots of Druid. I think he's got two <laughs> Druid decks. He just keeps winning with Druid. And he is playing Warrior, and I can't remember what his Warrior deck is because I don't think we've seen it yet. Yeah, I don't think we've seen too much of Warrior at all in this tournament so far, but you, know, you can see the guys just getting ready now. And it's really cool as well to see the difference between Ecop bringing, as you said, sort of like the standard lineup of classes yeah. and decks versus Fire's kind of like almost like wacky lineup because like, the Druid seems pretty standard. Everyone, you know, uh, recognizes the power of that deck at the moment. But then the Nazoth Paladin and the Free. Mage. How do you think that's going to go up against Ecop's lineup? Mm -hmm. It's very interesting because I think the most uh, interesting difference is the mage, and we also know that it's a freeze mage. The freeze mage having kind of a favorable matchup against Zul, but being completely out of order against uh, Warrior, of course, basically not winnable against Druid, especially if it's Katun Warrior, then the yeah. percentage is like five, maybe ten percent. So basically auto losing this um, game and against Druid it's also not that favorable so it, I think it will be of tremendous importance where um, Fire will be able to kill this uh, Freeze Mage into. Yeah I think that's going to be crazy too. It's uh, it, The problem is as well if you don't queue it first mm -hmm. and just try and like hit whatever matchup happens then Freeze Mage is a very difficult deck to counter queue into this lineup unless it's Zoo. Yep. As you said, because even yep. Druid can be a bit awkward because kind of anything can go on <laughs> in a Druid matchup just with all the discovers and the mm -hmm. Giants, the inclusion of Arcane Giants actually make the matchup a lot better because Freeze Mage just kind of struggles to deal with the minion right. that big. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think it might be interesting for Fire to queue the Freeze Mage now because Acorp I think will queue the Zoo. No, I think it's impossible that it's used to do. Um, I mean, we also see it now that, it's, uh, um, that okay. they didn't do it, but I also think that it's uh, basically impossible because Fire has to keep the freeze match in order for to... The zoo. Yeah, for the zoo. But um, so that brings Ecop in a position where he can never open with this. Yeah, zoo because he will always get the zoo. Okay, yeah, sure. Because at this very moment, very open zoo, or where he plays zoo not as the last deck, um, Fire can queue the freeze mage later. So it means that probably freeze mage is simply locked till the very, very last deck for Fire. And I wouldn't be surprised if Ecop would lock his zoo as the very, very last deck as well. Yeah, but we are getting into the game. It is the first semi final. The winner of this series will go into the finals. It's going to be Fire versus Ecop, Druid versus Druid. Enjoy guys. Cheers, Raven. Thank you very much. So this Druid versus Druid, we talked about this a lot yesterday. I think this is a really skillful, we've saying it's a really skillful mm -hmm. matchup with the one exception, the, the elephant in the room, the Yog. But without the Yog, I think... Yeah, maybe it's about the, the Wild Cross, really right? Skillful, right? Probably it's uh, also mainly uh, about the Wild Cross, so sure. drawing it or not. So in this case, both uh, players drew it. So I guess... Um, we can say white cross, um, check mark yes or no. If yep. no, big disadvantage. If both players have it, then we begin the real game. Right, yeah, and it's sort of similar to how Druid has always been as well. I remember you, mm -hmm. you made breakthroughs with Druid in mirror matches. If right. you got that, you both got yes or you both got no. You, you played a lot of this this mirror match a long time ago. Then. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Um, Druid was uh, one of my one of their favorite class for a very, very long time. So, um, yeah. But. So, Fire here is going to have um, the. Obviously, going to do Wild Growth probably now, but then he's going to have several different lines he can take. He can ramp up, or you can try and get that early teacher down as well on turn three next mm -hmm. turn. Uh, which way would you go with that? Would you go with the. Just keep ramping and see how it goes? Yeah, uh, definitely there. Um, I would try to get this Wild Growth out as soon as possible. I mean, now definitely. But also next turn still, so to be able to play uh, turn four with six mana. Um, a very big combination with a Wilder Teacher, maybe into Wrath, maybe uh, with a coin, uh, plus the Raven Idol into an end scene of War. If your opponent doesn't have Swipe immediately as an answer, you probably will simply win it from there. If your opponent needs to mulch your Wilder Teacher, you can simply deploy the end scene of War and win with this dude. 
So, like. yeah, definitely going down this line. We also see Ekop, which has been a, a dead, an entirely dead turn four. I mean, he might be able to play this 3-2. I'm not even sure whether that's good. Yeah, so he doesn't decide uh, to do it because um, the punter is so much stronger with the Wilder Teacher. And so we'll be interested to see what um, Fire does here. He has been a little bit eager to get the board developed throughout this tournament. He's been yeah. favoring developing rather than ramping a lot of the time. Okay. So we see him there going for the Violet Teacher. And I've mentioned this a couple of times. He got some advice from Terence, who is old teammate, okay. about how to handle these big pressures. And he's been mm -hmm. just told to play slowly. Take your time. Why hurry? You're let your nerves settle. So he picked up that violence, he went to play, and now he's having a think and going back to it. Yeah. If you're talking, uh, playing about slowly, uh, I can stand behind this 100%. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, um, I think if he plays the teacher, might as well went for the coin and Raven Idol play. I'm not sure uh, whether I like the blank teacher, probably not, because these two one ones are of pretty big importance. I would have definitely liked to see uh, much more the wild grows and shapeshift though, yeah. because um, if you also if you see uh, and take a look at the lines, I mean, you saw Ecop having no turn four play, and that means that unless Ecop really has the S Drake in his hand, because um, the Druid of the Claw is not being played, um, it means that he will definitely also have an entirely dead turn five and. Um, just playing something uh, into this dead turn five feels pretty wrong to me. Yeah, what we saw Ecop doing earlier, when, when the hands were very equal in his first round match, is he just let Vins go first. He's like, yeah. you play your thing, I'm going to always be reacting with okay. the same cards, but I've got the information of what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Ecop just like suckered him in, it's like, come at me, I'm going to just keep answering seeing your... what you're doing, I'm going to answer, I'm going to have the same card, so eventually I'm going to have a question yeah. And you've used your answers already. And that's, right. that's how he won his first round match, basically, in the mirror. Okay, and he may end up doing that again if the hands end up being level, while Fire is known to sort of be putting things down a bit quick. Okay, that sounds really interesting. And wow, another entire dead turn. It's so silly. We see a through it turn six, and if this is a dead turn, this is so big. It's so big. Um, yeah, it's... it's uh, it's really silly that you see something like this with six cards being an Ecop sent. That's kind of very unlucky. Yeah, eight mana, nothing to do if he wanted. Even, you know, even the innovate. Even could the have innovate. Him. It's crazy. And fire is actually. I mean, he's got the ancient of war, and again, just just doing that thing of just making sure he's not playing too quickly, writing down the cards, yep. settling his nerves. I like this. Uh, we are going to see that ancient of war, of course, and then Ecop will have to decide. Probably, you know. Do I want to mulch it? And the answer is probably yes, unless he gets something to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we can also see that the Ancient of War can be followed up by a coin wrath into Giant. So that's not, that's not the worst. Yeah, he's going to be able to start putting down threat after threat here. And of course, even the Yogg in Ecop's hand is useless right now. He hasn't had any spells to cast either. So yeah. for, for the short term, Ecop's going to have to be defending as much as he can as he finally gets a Fandral to do something later. Which well, is pretty insane. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, even he can probably even play it. No, I don't know. I mean, he definitely does want to mulch this 5-10 uh, Ancient of War. And then he might decide to play Fendel into Power of the Wild. M maybe even Fendel and Living Roots and Innovate Power of the Wild. What do you think? So if he Fendels, Innovate, Living Roots... Well, there's a lot of things going on there. 5-10 sure. doesn't deal with those things. And you've got 29 health to work with here. Like, that is a resource when you've got no other resources. We said this yesterday. Mm -hmm. Your life total is another resource when yep. you're out of cards that are doing anything. So I like that. Maybe just get four or five things on the board and worry about the 5-10 next turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got the making the, the safer play. Right, right. I mean, we see now uh, Doomguard in fire. Oh, did I... Yeah, I also um, miscounted the mana. I was thinking he can do everything, but yeah, no. In this case, that's correct. Yeah, he could have only played Fendril, Innovate and uh, Power of the Wild. So that would have not been ideal, mm -hmm. of course. Um, I mean, maybe. Even that it would have not been the worst, but I can definitely see just keeping the Fendril for the Wrath, Living Roots, Power of the Wild turn. Yeah. Much stronger. So... Fire now has got to sort of forget this Doom Guard for now. That's a card that will help him out sometime yeah. from now. It'd be really helpful. It will be very helpful. Surprise yeah. win or surprise board clear, anything. It's good against yeah. Ancient of War as well. It increases the reach by five and also increases the cards being able um, to be utilized. So even if Fire ever will run out of cards, he will have access to this 5 7 charge. So that's a pretty huge thing. No, I'm really curious what we will see here. Maybe even this. Yeah, what does he play? Oh, he does. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, well, wait, okay. wait, wait, wait. That's uh, aggressive. Um, um, yeah. Uh, okay. So that's um, 
very, very aggressive. It goes back to what I was saying earlier about how he's chosen to play Druid through this tournament in that he likes to get the board developed. Um, a lot of players have disagreed with this line and it, it does seem like that's a bit wasteful resources-wise, giving up two of your cards when Ikop has such a big hand and you know he's got big cards because he's done nothing. Um, but Fire has been consistent with this strategy through the tournament of just building a board and and like playing the tempo style game. Yeah, I mean the time we just witnessed um, was a very interesting thing because um, while the Doomguard creates the most value being deployed as one of the later cards mm -hmm. and that's not only because he discards cards and if you deploy him later he doesn't discard any kind of cards but it's also about the charge where the charge is based on, on an empty board the charge is really worth nearly nothing mm -hmm. whereas the later it gets and the more um, you bring the druid on the better he becomes so you can use the charge to trade into for example a fenrir but you can also use the charge in order to deal these five reach so I, yeah, I, and, and he also happened to discard the giant, which is such a huge threat. I mean, we, we know that Echo wouldn't have been able to handle the 8 giant, at least not in a very easy way. So, um, yeah, I'm very surprised. To yeah, I agree with you um, as well. We've said about Echo using his life as a resource. Well, if yep. fire hits you in the face for five, you're helping him use that life as a resource. You're exactly. taking away the removal aspect of your card, yep. which Echo wants you to do that. He wants you to hit him for five. That's... That's the nicest thing you can do to him right now. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing the the punishment here as Hiccup's time starting to just get back into this and Fire only has the four cards instead of the six now. Yeah. Hmm. You could swipe the punter and <laughs> mark off the by the one one into the four six, maybe. That's probably good, right? Uh, yeah, there's so many ways to use this removal. I guess it depends how he feels about making lots of 1-1s. One well, yeah, sure. I mean, why not? Um, I mean, swipe and mark of the nature creates two 1-1s. One he could swipe the 4-3 and then mark of the nature, the 1-1. One one. Um, by doing so, he would have also been able to utilize the 1-1. One one. So that's also kind of a good thing, I feel. Um, but what does he decide to do now? All right, okay. So speaking of board... The board is now... It's the same, right? The board is the same, but he decided... Yeah, Eckup's got a really nice clear here. Um, it's going to be able to just use his cards pretty much the maximum efficiency. Fire's going to have to swipe that board next turn, and Eckup's going to have Wild Growth or Yog, depending how things pan out. And why right. Fire's running out of stuff now. 5-7 would be nice about now. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, or an 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> yeah, um, one or the other. So, um, talking about the play last turn, we now see a Power of the Wild in the hand. Um, so the difference would have been Mark of Nature or Living Roots. Um, so in this case, uh, Fire seems to be stuck with this Mark of Nature, um, which is interesting because he might have um, been able to opt in to uh, get utilization of this, uh, out of this Mark of Nature while having uh, minions in play, where he will probably struggle a little bit now to make up for that. Yeah, I mean, conditional cards are strong for a reason. They're strong yeah. because you have a condition you have to meet. So anytime you can meet that condition and get something out of your powerful card, exactly. you should use the condition while it's there. Exactly. Um, while <laughs> the interesting thing about Mark of Nature is that it's uh, <laughs> conditional um, and even if you meet the conditions, it's not that No, powerful. sure. It, yes, yeah, so yeah. to get anything out of it at all in that, in that yeah. instance. Right, I agree. Um, as someone who played a lot of arena, I rate it a little bit higher than it is a construct. Okay, player, fair enough, yeah. fair enough. I mean, I can only remember myself having taken this Mark of Nature um, two times. Both of those times it came it's, so badly yeah. that I just decided to it, usually, usually just opt it out. It's still not that great even in arena, but it's a card you may end up with slightly more often. Right, um, right. So yeah. Ecop here um, put his faith in the cycling. The Yogg's only got three or four spells, maybe five. Yep. So he's put his faith in getting the extra three or four cycles. Ooh, a and Deathwing and a Bog Creeper. I mean, both cards which are of tremendously big value, especially if your opponent is out of cards. And that's sick. What would you, which one would you pick? Honestly, I think I take the Deathwing because yeah. you're going to play Yogg soon. Yeah. And then if your opponent recovers from whatever crazy stuff happens there, yeah. Deathwing just does it all again. I, I would have picked the 
Bog Creeper for sure. Right. Because the Yog can not be... I mean, I, I can definitely see the Deathwing too. Like what, ex what you just described is... Uh, um, would have also been exactly my train of thought if you wouldn't have been uh, ahead on board. But because um, you are ahead on board, you um, can see that the Yog played cannot now. really be played. Exactly, right. and the Deathwing neither. So both of those cards being extremely reactive cards, but you are ahead at this very moment. Your opponent has only access to one or two cards. So um, I'm not sure about this. I mean, Bob Creeper could have been already deployed this turn, 6-8 Not uh, yeah, really something. A Deathwing, of course, does answer an opposing Yogg as well. So yeah. he's, ex yeah. uh, sorry, e showed earlier that he was happy to just sit and answer Druid all day long yeah. in yeah. the mirror. That's that's how he has seems to have practiced as much. So he's just gone for the more reactive. But you're right, if he put a Bob Creeper down now, last turn, He'd be killing this 5-10 this turn. Mm -hmm. He would still have a 6-3 against a 1-1. One, one. And he would have the Emperor as well. So yeah, he would have been in a really good spot, as it turns out, if he'd taken that. Yeah, and that's only if your opponent draws an Ancient of War. I mean, not even that is being said. I also have to point out that um, uh, if you if you see the people, uh, for example, on Reddit, uh, there are a lot of Yog uh, Sauron discussions. And the card Yog is um, compared the most with is actually yes. Deathwing. Yes. Exactly. So um, if you choose to pick the Deathwing here, it just tells you that you will have two times the same card in your hand, and that's usually not the very best thing to have. Yeah, I used to play, well, back in the day before people realized how good Yogg was and had learned how to set Yogg mm -hmm. up, because Yogg was not that great originally, because we didn't set it up correctly as a collective hive mind. Sure. I sort of tried Deathwing a few times, and Deathwing, you will say, it's good enough. Yep. Yeah, if, you've, yep. if you can't craft Yogg, craft it. But if you can't, put a Deathwing in your deck if you have it instead. It's, it's okay. It, it does do, like you've just said, it, right. it clears the board. Your hand's usually empty anyway. It's okay. Do you want the mark of nature <laughs> to play around <laughs> counter spell? Yeah. It's not, it's not exactly ideal. And we also see that Fire is kind of upset about this fact. Um, I can definitely see that. Um, also about the Yogg, surviving a 7-1, basically <laughs> clearing his board, but still pulling two secrets and surviving himself. That's that's not a very common thing we witness nowadays. Yeah, Yogg yeah, usually ends up killing himself pretty yeah. quickly. Uh, something just to point out here, if this was answered with a Yogg, you can answer that Yogg with your death ring. This is giving you that win guaranteed in the Yogg versus Yogg war. Right. So, you know, it's two cards the same that he took. And I think I think we agree the Bog people would have worked out better. Am I greeting? <laughs> okay, yeah. Wow, so, he gets the giant. I mean, there's not many things he could have got anyway, but yeah, he gets the 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah. And yeah, fire feeling the pain here. Do we know what the other secret is? I don't think it's going to matter because he's dead next turn. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, he is. But very close. He might have nearly been able to create a taunt, but there is a second secret, which is, it turns out, the <laughs> entity and fire is really destroyed here. Yeah. He is, yeah. Those, those were definitely not the things he wanted to see. And both of those played like they played earlier. Fire developing that early tempo board, yep. not getting the job done. And Zigzo, uh, that's twice, sorry Zigzo. Uh, Ikop has sat there t and just reacted, taken his time, cleared up, and you know, let Fire run out of cards. And the Doomguard play in particular was, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. was a play that took away a lot of his advantage in his early hand. Yeah, I also agree um, that the Doomguard deploy was, um, well, probably the key turning point of this match because everything was looking very nice for Fire. He had the early board uh, control, he had the early board um, present and the place. Uh, Ecop having an empty turn 4 and an empty turn 6. Um, despite all of this, um, Fire also being able to seize the board control, um, ending up losing because he uh, went out of resources, out of good resources to be played. Um, discarding this one giant definitely didn't help. Right, and uh, I think Ekop is playing that matchup very well. He's obviously practiced it a lot. Uh, we've said throughout this tournament how Ekop is, you know, he's looking for, he's not looking for it, but he's putting himself on the market as yeah. somebody who's now you know, teamless. And mm -hmm. when you're in that position, you can go two ways. You can keep trying really hard to get yourself back to the top of the game, or you can just give up. And he's really trying hard to get back to the top of the game. We're seeing him playing better than he's ever played before, I think. And he's always been a strong player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do you see this matchup? Mm, well, I would assume that the uh, Paladin is favorite simply because both classes 
are reactive, but Paladin simply has access to the bigger, better threats and the bigger and better value mm -hmm. cards. Yeah, when yeah. when the when the um, Wisps, Whispers of the Old Gods came out yep. originally, yep. Nizoth Paladin was one of the best decks. Okay. Before everybody had tuned up the the curve decks and made it so the Paladin was a little bit inconsistent. The evil and curve it, decks. Yeah, the evil curves. I know you're a big fan of the curve <laughs> decks. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Your favorite yeah. thing. Very, very favorite. But the Paladin was good because the curve decks weren't quite tuned, mm -hmm. and so the Paladin didn't yep. didn't get killed like it does now. In in ladder play, you play this Paladin deck. You will just die to things like Shaman really quickly a lot yeah. of the time. But Druid's going to give you the time you need to do all those things that... Mm -hmm. and, and Paladin has very, very powerful cards. Oh yeah, he has. Yeah, I mean, especially now with the Ivory Knight, that's also a very strong card. In general, True Silver Champion, a quality, Isle or Peacekeeper. I mean, all these are just power-packed cards, especially against cards which Druid can usually deploy. So a 5-10 Taunt tree might be very amazing, but if it suddenly shrinks down to 1-10 Taunt, I mean, yeah. that's not very amazing, is it? Yeah, 1-10, not really... Especially when you're not in a hurry to kill them. Mm -hmm. Like, the 10 doesn't even matter. It's going to eat yeah. one, a couple of your 1-1s one at worst. Who cares? Like Exactly, yeah. And usually there will be a Doom here and the Doom Sayer will simply clear no matter what. So yeah, that's that's basically how it will usually play out, but let's see. Yeah, the Doom Sayer does give a bit of protection against this innovated out 4-4, so interesting to see him keep it back. Why might you keep back the Doom Sayer at the moment? Are you going to clear and then play it later to buy yourself a turn, maybe? Um, I, I would just probably play the Peacekeeper. I mean, I don't see a big reason not to play him. Um, it's not ideal, but uh, uh, you would have uh, what uh, played the Doomsday? Or? Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering why you might not play it. Are you going to wait for a big clear turn like Equality yep. and Pyromancer and then play the Doomsayer and then it comes back to you mm -hmm. on turn 8, turn 9? Yeah, I think the Doomsayer would usually simply get eaten here, right? I mean, yeah. there are so many ways to handle this Doomsayer. So I, I think your expectation of this Doomsayer, if you deploy him, of surviving are probably very, very, very small. So, yeah, definitely not a fan of this. Um, but I'm also not a fan of uh, sending the 1-1 one -one into the dragon, to be honest. Uh, just delivering one damage on this dragon and losing your 1-1 one -one, uh, doesn't seem to be very ideal to me. What do you think about that? So something that Echo has done in trading a lot in this tournament so far is keeping just every small advantage he can get. So yep. I think it just fits in with the style of I'm going to keep my... just get every... Thing I can get out of the resources, just take the free kill and you yeah. know, try and occupy the board in this manner here. No, but what I'm saying is, uh, if he would have kept his 1-1, um, we also see Fire having a Solemn Vigil in his hand. So I I would have guessed that his very, very big main priority and Barnes coming down. And Blood Mage plus one card, that's huge. Just get the actual card. Just played the Blood Mage for free. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, basically uh, coming down to the Vigil mm -hmm. point, he just wants to preserve his minion to trade in his turn in order to play this Solemn Vigil for as Right, so yes, that's possible. correct. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely what I was misunderstanding you, my bad. I mean, there was the point of Swipe coming down with the Ezra Drake, but having a 3-3 three three and a 1-1 one one is also not that threatening against Swipe, so that's perfectly fine if a Swipe would have come down. Yeah, definitely. I was misunderstanding what you were saying. Yeah, definitely oh, sure, sure. those 1-1s. One um, so Fire's in this position. We saw Fire lose yesterday with Paladin against Warrior, where at the end of the game he had 10 cards in his hand. Yep. And he, yep. uh, the Warrior had none. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's like, he asked us afterwards, did I make a mistake? And I said, well, I didn't watch all of the game, I have to be honest. Oh, yeah. I, I if you've yeah. died with 10 cards in your hand against zero, yep. you've made a mistake because you haven't played cards that have value. Oh, Somewhere yeah. you've mm -hmm. made a mistake. You should have at least tried to play your cards. And I'm just concerned that he's building up this massive hand again and not doing anything. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There's there. no hurry, but mm -hmm. just a little bit worrying. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, um, yesterday against Radu, I mean, um, he, uh, Fire really didn't get these uh, one of these two consecrations he would have really right. needed. So both consecrations being in the last seven cards of his deck was also incredibly unlucky. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't meant to be a dig. It's just it's just, no, no, it's sure, just sure. That, you know, he'll be aware of the back of his mind that happened yesterday, and we may see him do a panic clear or something at some oh, point. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 definitely agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. hear what you're saying. Okay, so Ekop doing the best you can with the Sylvanas, which is just give yourself the best chance not to lose your teacher. I'm not even sure about this, because Ekop could have attacked with one more, and still having the ability to clear, um, right? So, um, he attacked two... Yeah, I would have probably attacked with one more, just to increase the damage output by one. Okay. Okay, Ivory Knight coming down, plus ten life. 
<laughs> oh, oh interesting choices, I think. Yeah, probably the equality, right? Just the equality for later use. Even though you've, you're comfortable for now, you just take this, and this will work out well for you. Like you don't need the you don't need the health right no, now, no. and equality mm -hmm. will clear a board somewhere along the line. Even yeah. if you clear it with one ones, you don't have to clear it with the combos. You can just some of just equality the board, and your one ones fight their six ones. Yeah, definitely. And the board is also not that threatening at the moment. We see uh, Fire being facing five damage, so it's perfectly fine. Ekup just playing very patiently here, not not slamming the ancient towards, just, just getting more options yep. for the next turn. More options with more mana equals more good things that you can do. Right, and also the living roots. I mean, living roots also creating another one one, killing this ivory knight with your tokens. Um, but I'm not sure whether I agree completely. It's, it's, it's a very close call, of course, because you have to find the exact perfect balance, applying enough pressure so that Paladin, that you grind Paladin down, um, but not over committing at the same time, of course. Right, treading a very fine line. You want to put them on a low enough life total or health total that they need to use some of that healing. Yeah. And without, like you say, without turning. So the line is can I put you down to 14 and scare you into using a healing inefficiently? Because if you yep. do a healing efficiently as Paladin, you're going to win. Exactly. Mm. Okay, so this, I really, really like this play from Fire here because he played this um, Doomsayer, but he also protected it with his Torrent. So that usually means that if um, Ikob cannot breach this Torrent and kill the Doomsayer, um, Fire will be in a game deciding position, game winning position afterwards. Well, and he's held this Doomsayer for a long time. We asked what the plan was going to be, and this yep. is the plan. This is the plan yep. now being shown. Great. Do 10 damage to my minions. He's healed mm -hmm. for 10 because you have to. At the very least, he's healed for 10 here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, and also, uh, with the Pyramid's equality in the hand, he can also just uh, block any kind of board over expansion too. Okay, so Ekop. It's not a hard decision, but you do have to decide, do I want to let this go off? And mm -hmm. the answer is probably no. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I need to get damage done. Yeah. But also, you've got to use so many resources to kill it. Like, it's crazy. Do you really? You've got to balance that in your head. How how do I kill this without losing so many things? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because seeing playing a mulch on the Doomsayer even, but that's as you point out, very very expensive. Yeah, he's going to get. He's repeatedly getting value out of these one ones. He's managing to generate a, an army of things that are, are killing. Oh, did he not? Did he not? Did he? Did he? Did he rope? No. Whoa! Oh. Okay. Oh no. Uh, was it rope? I but if he thought there were two, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, yeah, I also don't, um, didn't pay attention so too much. It seems strange that you would burn one of them in and not the other if you didn't rope though. You would, you'd have gone face if you had one, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So now uh, we probably see, yeah, Blood Mage coming down with the Consecration. Um, so that's huge value. Solid Vigil for free. <laughs> that's pretty convenient. That's pretty damn convenient. Nice. Here. Yeah. And even having just something on the board is, is pretty helpful. He's got to be careful with his hand size, of course, with this down or down, but he's managing that really well right now. Yeah, I mean, now Fire has a very, very distinctive edge in this game. He just closed out. Um, uh, he could seize the board control, not tremendously, but definitely being in position where he doesn't have to fear anything. Didn't even take damage this turn. He even got a tentacle, by the way, from the mulch, which could also be of some help. Well, yeah, definitely in terms of clearing with equality at some yeah. point and the Pyromancer. Exactly. Um, he's going to have the heal at any time he wants it as well. And Druid just doesn't have that burst damage, apart from if you don't want to go too low in case they emergency yog and mm -hmm. you don't want to go below 11 just in case they Pyromancer pyro blast you if you're this uh, far in front. Uh, did, uh, uh, what, 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, how many got uh, 6, 8, 9, okay, that's perfect. So, yeah, let's see what uh, Fire comes up with. I wouldn't even, I mean, is there a problem of playing the Light Lord here? Is it so bad? Maybe that's that's, that's what I like anyway. I was, I was wondering why not, but again, he's just taking his time. And... I mean, he, he can also just play quality. I mean, he, sure. has two, he has access to double equality in his hand, and equality deals nine damage, so two mana Pyroblast. Nine damage is not ten. And, but and just to remind people that equality was like a free equality. It came from another card. So sure, sure. Yeah, but it's, it's still an equality. It's not one of his two equalities. He still has another for right. later in his deck too. Uh, right. okay, just occupying with Kodo, making sure you know, he, he likes to keep tempo. That's fire's way. I, I'm not sure about the Kodo to nothing. Kodo back, but yeah, definitely. I don't. I don't see what speaks against. Maybe even just equipping a true silver here. The Kodo just feels to be. 
Well, I mean, Kuro into nothing seems to be a little bit weird. And this is Ekop's chance with the FanDuel to get him some value. I mean, it probably won't get him enough, but it is a chance to get some value out of your cards to, to at least try and keep up with the Paladin for the time being. Sure. And get some more spells cast. Like, every turn that goes by is another spell that's cast, which is another chance from the Yogg later in the game, which he's going to cast probably with four or five cards left in his deck so yep. that he doesn't kill himself. Yep. And so he has the maximum chance of, of something going really good. Oh, for pirate quality will strike so tremendously hard here. Um, I'm not even sure about the Yogg. I mean, maybe you want to play the Yogg after Nezot came down, right? So yeah. you are probably keeping this Nezot, uh, this Yogg as an answer against Nezot. Just saying, okay, you got Nezot, but I got Yogg. So they both even themselves out. Whereas Yogg is not a key card for the Druid, but it is definitely for the Paladin. It's really hard for Ekop to balance here, but I do feel that he's just seen an equality used on one minion. Yeah, and uh, he saw the two heal from the from the um, Ivory Knight, so he knows there's a two mana card being picked. I just wonder if he can read that there's actually an equality in Fire's hand here. He, Fire gave away that first equality kind of easily. Yeah. So I wonder if Ekop could have actually read that. You know, maybe there's another equality coming here. Okay, now I'm very curious how Fire will play this. So he plays equality first, and Fire into spell. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So yesterday, Fi made this play and did it the wrong way around by mistake. Yeah, I remember. And he, Raven said he will never make that mistake again if he watches this. Fi has been spent if all day doesn't. watching VOD. He's worked really hard today. He's put a lot of time into watching the VOD from yesterday, from today. Right. He, mm -hmm. he did it right today. Yeah, perfect, yeah. I mean, definitely Fi uh, somebody who can uh, see his misplays, learn from the misplays. And yeah, I mean, there are some players, uh, some also, um, which uh, make misplays and then they always blame it on bad luck or yeah. on uh, something which happened. But, uh, or they don't watch the VOD, so they never hear the commentary yeah. point it out or no one tells them. Yeah, he's just gone exactly. away and looked at it and gone, okay, yeah. won't do that again. Exactly, yeah. And the right conclusion, and we already see it, it just paid off. Yeah. That little bit of extra hard work, just mm -hmm. improving yourself all the time, no matter what level you are at this game, yep. go away, do something, improve yourself, mm -hmm. and you'll feel good about it next time because you'll do something right and you will learn and you'll feel great inside. Absolutely. Um, keep off Uldermann coming down here, probably in the combination with Cairn, what do you think? Maybe yep. even Trucever, I don't know. Yeah, that's fine as well, but uh, Trucever doesn't, doesn't really give him the two life, so I disagree with this. I would just have slashed the Cairn here. Right, so you would have been... Even down to that two life, you just slam the can so you can get the two life next turn when you're on 27. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Ancient of War is not an Ancient of War uh, any longer. I mean, he is an Ancient of War, but kind of a tiny one. And as being such, it's not something like an Emperor Sorison which creates value every turn, but it was just a, sink, a simple 3-3 three, three minion on the board. And the 3-3 three, three minion is so not threatening if you're at 30 life. Yeah, I mean, the Keeper's but designed this way for a reason. The, the Keeper turns you into 3-3. Three, three. He's a 3-4. Three, He's challenging right. anyway. Okay. Right. And you're a 3-4, so you're challenging the 3-3 anyways. But to have a cannon on the board or not is such a tremendous difference. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so Druid huge. cannot deal with Cairn in a happy way. Like, yeah. Vulture, it lives, basically, yeah. and gives you another card. And if you use all your other stuff, you haven't got enough damage for your face, because you want these swipes to either clear up one ones or go face one or the other. Exactly, yeah. And now look at this. I mean, in this case, he needs to keep uh, uh, Thorazin alive, and that's definitely less convenient for him. For sure, and we see Thorazin. Wow. That's also such a huge big hit. Okay, now Living Roots and Yogg, probably Living Roots yep. first. I don't even know what he wants to Living Roots. Maybe he just I wants think to Living Roots to Ragnaros. Give your Yogg the maximum yep. chance to... Like, if you get a Flame Strike, you don't want the guy to still be an 8-4. Yeah, I don't mind this whatsoever. Sure. I mean, he can just play... Uh, keep the Living Roots for later, yep. having one less spell, whatever. Doesn't matter too much. And, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> um, but not if it doesn't hit here. So. Unleash is interesting. It's pretty strong. Repentance is strong. Innovate is strong. The other one, Innovate, was Lord of Spiders. Just insane consecration coming if down. If he gets rid of this Ragnaros, this Are is going to be me? incredible. What is, what is this Yogg doing? Preparation. Oh, yes, that's your holy well. wrath. Only good spells. I mean, okay, it hits his hand, but it still drew a card. This Yogg basically spelled only... That preparation means he can starfall the Ragnaros. Yeah. For five, and I mean, then kill it with uh, the Living Roots. And he's going to get the teacher down, put the dogs in, get the... One one from the teacher, and he's going to be able to do the other things, but he's seen the rope going, he decided not to work that out. It's just insane. I mean, what we witnessed here is, yeah, insane like always. Yogg's sane, basically. I mean, the, the spiders here are going to give him the sustain, potentially, for... Yeah. Yeah, who knows, you might get a King Crush or something, which would be eight to the face. It was crazy, yeah. I mean, 
He dealt with the opposing board. At the same time, Jock lived with full health. He has three, three spiders, very convenient too. The spiders give him more fuel. And he ended up having five mana after he played this Jock, which is kind of very, Do very Do you know what the secret case. is? I don't know if we've seen the secret or not, but... Oh yeah, it uh, was uh, Repentance. Repentance, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Repentance doesn't track that tremendously here. And these tentacles are going to do something, although, you know, Fire's going to have to use that Forbidden Healing next turn, I should think. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. 23 is okay, I guess. Mm. Oh, maybe he will now, though. Yeah, I mean, this, uh, okay, that's interesting. Probably you send the Spiders in the 8-8, eight, eight, then you get some nice beasts. Yeah. Two, two of the Spiders, of course. Two of and then the other one into the 1-1, one, one, yeah, yeah. the board. See what beasts you get and plan your turn. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm the teacher doesn't seem right because the tentacles are going to blow up and kill the the one ones anyway, right? Yeah, I really don't see it. I, I don't see what Ecop is up to, but uh, probably he wants to dig for a power of the wild he still got in his deck, I guess. Sure. So yeah, if he hits that, then... Yeah, Whoa. There go. Very good decision, paid off. Yeah, and his, his deck is very, very small at this point, so he, he could make that gamble comfortably. Yeah, but that being said, um, well, the Light Lord will still be on board. So that's not that's not very convenient. I mean, the light lord if he hits twice, that's a pretty pretty big damn thing. And actually, if fire draws the second true silver, I think he has lethal with the consecration. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, he doesn't even need to do that, right? I mean, uh, fire can just sit on this light lord. Playing this Consecration, um, yeah, it's pretty strong. Even another spell. He can even, what, uh, Pyro and heal something, right? Pyro, what would that be? Not the Doomsayer? Um, yeah, but he has a, a lot of options here. So... Um, Just to point out that Ecop did do that one point of damage with the Tentacles to everything, so that the Light Lord now is only 50-50 to heal face. Well, I mean, I'm not even sure whether he wants that, because what the, um, what Fyro can also simply do is he um, can Consecrate, he can attack the Violet Teacher, and then the Light Lord will simply him, uh, heal uh, himself, itself. Yeah, yeah and now it's, it's good for him now. And his Doomsayer comes down... I'm not sure about this. It looks weird to me. Yeah, this is one of those turns where you play the turn, You look at what cards you started with at the start of the turn, you yeah. look at what's left at the end, and you look at it and you think, this doesn't look right. No. But you can't say what exactly part of it is wrong. Yeah. It just, you look like you've spent too much resources here. That was, uh, yeah, so Eight cards for fire, and I didn't see Ecop's number, but it's definitely less than six. It's one, in fact. So he could have also only planned, uh, spent the Consecration Light Lord with the field hit himself. Um, he could have played the Doomsayer as well. So the only difference would have been, um, yeah, having the pyro and the and the healing against the consecration. So basically, um, pyro forbidden healing or having the consecration in the hand. Yeah, I think that was uh, and and these damaged minions. So yeah. light lord at eight eight instead of at eight two. So uh. just shows how hard this matchup is when Acop got that really insane looking yog, and in fairness, he didn't get much luck off the spiders. Like the, the two LX and the wolf is. He's pretty poor. Yeah. Um, but even so, he's, he had that little yog, and he's still probably not going to win the game, although he has some chance. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I guess that's exactly what you said. I mean, with the play Fyra chose, um, he basically gave um, Ecop the chance to win. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so. Consecration will hit hard, Kern will hit hard. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, so. Consecration for sure. And yeah, yeah, uh, can. <laughs> At some point he has to come, and yeah, that's probably. And I've seen good, Fire's good. notes from other games. He does write down every card. So if he goes through those in his time here, he can probably work out that there's two wild growths left in hand. Yeah, mm -hmm. which would be very important because then he can manage his resources. Oh, if I kill these, I've won. There's yeah. one beast. I need to save up eight just because King Quest might happen. Wait, he, wait, uh, he didn't. He didn't play the consecration. Um, Wow. <laughs> he's, he's looking at his notes now, so in a minute we may see a change in style. Okay. Um, so he played the Tourist Silver instead of the Consecration because he says... Um, what does he say? Let's see. Um, um, what could be the reason that he kept on this Consecration this turn? Uh, maybe he wanted to see the final 
card in Ekop's hand and thought that he was safe. Yeah, okay. He, he may not be right, but that's probably what he was thinking. No, absolutely, yeah, sure. I mean, I can definitely see that um, you might also consider keeping this consecration. It was just such an insanely, cr crazily good board to consecrate there that, um, yeah, I'm, I'm So if I'm his exactly notes are sure. good, he knows he won. The humility on the 9-7 will win the game. If his notes are good and he knows what's in Ekop's hand, they're not surprised cards. Two wild goes and innovate. Yeah, sure, but, but also in general. I mean, the humility is, well, <laughs> I mean, um, even even uh, without the humility, he would have probably won, but with the humility, it's yeah. a very, very, very clear cut. Um, Jacob might try to continue to play just yeah. to see more cards from this Paladin deck. Right, and this is important in these formats where the, you haven't seen everybody's deck. There may be a surprise card you can get yeah. prior to play here. Um, there may be a second Tauren or something like that. Mm -hmm. just, just something a bit unusual that you want to see. But no, he, he chooses to concede, it's just too full on. And goes to one all. Yeah. Um. Um. Ekop's still with a very slight edge, in my opinion, because that's just the counter match. Now Ekop gets to choose the match he wants. Yeah, um, yeah, and also, uh, yeah, we also have still the freeze match, which is not ideal against Katoom Um This will be of very tremendous importance now, this game, because um, Ekop will probably uh, go uh, for his zoo, um, yeah. and if he kills this zoo um, and he loses, then it will be very bad for him because uh, there's only Cartoon Warrior left, and yeah, he's. Uh, this is probably the uh, game which will probably decide the match here. Right. So for me, I think the zoo is a small favourite here, um, but it can lose very easily. It's not. Yeah. It's not like yeah. the old. Okay, I've said it this a few times, but counters aren't what they used to be. Yeah. Uh, we've we've got a couple in this match are, that are more old school counters, but zoo versus paladin. The zoo is probably. 55 to 60 percent of most. Yes, yes, I agree. Um, um, but this zoo hand uh, looks kind of amazing. We have already Peddler, we have the buff with the abuse of sergeant, we have knife juggler, we have imkin gloves. I mean, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's hard to know exactly what you want, but you've got a one drop and you've got a boss, and you can do some other things as well. Yeah, you yeah. Can choose a card from the peddler, and you can juggle, I mean, just varied things to deal with. The very few things the Paladin can do anyway early, you just develop your board and make it difficult, like mm -hmm. Zoo does. Yep. Um, On the other hand, we have the Paladin with a true several champion in the hand, which is already pretty good. Um, yeah, but... Uh, oh! Yeah, now, now Actually, the hand is really good. the boss away, that's interesting. It's interesting, but he probably thinks, okay, the Incan Cross is basically like a 2-6. I mean, it's a 2-4 and he mm -hmm. creates 1-1, one, one, so yeah. it's, it's basically a 2-6. doesn't really apply too much pressure. I can definitely get behind that play. And it's also kind of weak against True Silver, right? So he just thinks, okay, I need this pressure, I need a high amount of attack. Um, did we see the Mulligan from Fire? Did he, did he Mulligan the True Silver champion away? It looks like he did, yeah. Okay. Why, um, and one thing here with this Darkshire Councilman that's going to happen is you can't keep it down. You can't humility it for long. You can't peacekeeper it for long. You have to get rid of it. So getting rid of the true silver there is getting rid of one of your ways of you know, taking four health off that Councilman. Right. He just keeps coming back at you. You have to actually kill it. I'm just wondering uh, what cards you would like to see if you don't like to see your true silver champion. I was thinking that's probably one of the best cards. Um, like you, you don't need to quality zoo. Maybe consecration is a card he's looking for. Um, definitely the consecration. Uh, maybe even a little bit the paramount high quality combination. Mm -hmm. But there are a, an entire lot of cards which are definitely way worse than this true silver champion. With the true silver champion, it, it carries so much value. Four life, two times four attack. It's pretty good, depending on what this does, of course. But yeah, I mean, let's see how it will play out. Yeah, true silver dodges minion versus minion combat, which what Zoo's good at. He just goes, no, you're not, you can't combat my weapon. I'm just exactly. going to hit you, your things with it. So Yeah, yeah. Right, so Eckhart making, you know, the plays that Zoo makes early, the, the thing we say a million times per tournament, just keeping that board, but getting that Councilman down is a massive threat. He can do a lot of damage very quickly with his Paladin. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you do have to do your damage fairly quickly. You can't, you can't mess around controlling the board all day against this deck because it will eventually start grinding you down backwards. That's right. Mm -hmm. The 
The great thing with playing Zoo here is you don't have to worry too much about overcommitting. You have the magic button that just draws you more cards if you get caught out. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be sensible, but you don't have to worry too much. I also see that it's a pretty good thing here. Um, I mean, speaking of um, the match again, if Ekob really um, happens to seal this game, and his favorite here, it really doesn't matter at all whether Fire will be able to to win with his uh, free smash against his zoo, because the free smash will inevitably face the warrior afterwards. Right. If this will happen, there is basically no chance to win, right? So yeah, because Zoo Warrior is very, very strong in that position. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, it, it just Fire has to win here. Mm. And the hand doesn't really um, doesn't really tell, tell, tell the story that he will. But yeah, let's see about it. Yeah, right now it's looking like Fire's not going to be able to keep any board, and he's not going to be able to clear the board enough. And if he does, I mean, Ekop's comfortable. He's he's gone for this um, this seeker with the feeling that you know I'm going to get a five five here. And. This is the thing that made the Paladin deck inconsistent in the first place. If you're not, yep. if you're not lucky, you just draw eight drops and six drops, and, mm -hmm. and this is why people stopped playing it in the first place. Before, before things changed, the Paladin got better with the Ivory Knight and so on. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, he still had his drop, so there was there's still the turn four which he could utilize his value or his mana at least. So it's not super bad, but yeah, I definitely agree. It's not ideal. And no way currently in Fire's hand to actually kill this councilman either. That equality needs something to help it out. Mm -hmm. And this councilman is going to be sort of six or seven by next turn, maybe even nine or ten, really soon. Yeah. Kill you really quickly. I mean, that being said, Fire only needs access to one Pyromancer, and then he will already be able to clear the board with his equality in the hand, maybe also do something else too. So that's. It's probably not the worst. Um, Eckup's looking at this juggler rather than the dog, by the way, because if one of the juggles hits the 2-3, yeah. he will have such nice trades and keep his hand back as well. Yep. And that's why he's, he's working out, do I want to go for the safe direwolf and just trade them in anyway, or do I want to go for a slightly more aggressive juggler? Oh, he can just play them both. And he can sure. just play them both, yeah. I, I also agree with playing them both, yeah. If the juggler hits the face, you can still clear it. Yeah, that's good. Song looks great. Probably also trading into the 2-2, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah I mean, Consecration sure. and that sort of thing right now, you might as well trade while you can, just in case your board is hurt, but... Yeah, Echo seems to be um, upset about something. Did, did you see? Did you see it? Why? Uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, so he missed one damage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure, sure, he missed one damage <laughs> by um, attacking the wrong order. Um, yeah, I guess uh, it. this could be important, but uh, it doesn't look... It doesn't look like it would take such a tremendous role in this very moment and maybe even drawing two cards here i mean he needs these cards so i would i would probably even do it just drawing these two cards and just hope what do you think we're learning yeah I, I thought your play i'm looking at this humility and thinking fire's gonna go for it as he picks it up but like we said earlier this, this doesn't right. deal with the problem the problem it hasn't gone away it's you've just saved yourself four life for one mana i think it, yeah I, that's that's would you cast a one mana gain four life health there? I think it's not enough. You need no, to draw some cards that deal with the problem, not not make the problem slightly less painful. Definitely not. I I think uh, that was probably uh, the excitement and uh, the pressure uh, speaking to Fire here because um, I cannot imagine that um, he would have made such a decision or such a play in a um, normal situation, but. Um, I guess in such a pressure, um, in such a high pressure situation mm -hmm. where he really knows that everything relies on this very game, yes. he might have not been looking, uh, want to look stupid by um, drawing two cards now and then maybe getting finished by something like a power overwhelming, power overwhelming combination next turn immediately um, and hence decided to uh, dodge this very thing. Yeah, by but, playing what yeah. he will be thinking is safe, which is actually playing dangerously. Yeah, and no, I'm not saying it's good. I, I definitely yeah, yeah. Uh, heavily disagree with the play he took. I think. No, uh, not, not like yeah. you say. He's, mm -hmm. you know, he's in front of a big stage here. Yep. There's, there's maybe teams looking to pick up exactly. mid-level player that you know would be looking at this, and he'll he'll be nervous in this situation. But 
On the other hand, he's also managing to shrug it off a little bit there. You see his animation, he's like, oh, yeah. okay, you know, I'm going to make mistakes yeah. today, so. He doesn't even bother to draw the cards. I mean, he knows that there is nothing in the deck, but I would have been really interesting, uh, interested in the cards because um, it was, at this point, probably 12% per draw for the Pyromancer, and two draws means 24% to, not yeah, a, it but something like one, sure. one, one and a four, right? Um, to just to just play Pyromancer like quality, the board is empty. And uh, from that point, you can really see it back, maybe even top taking some kind of a true silver. And then seizing the board back like this, he had access to Ragnar's Light Lord. And if Ragnar's Light Lord is being deployed in a position where Zoo is not completely, utterly behind on board, he really, really does a very, very good job of stabilizing. So I think maybe he gave up too early, too quickly. Yeah, and just a function of, you know, a little bit of pressure, like you said. So this is where Last Hero Standing is interesting to me. Mm -hmm. There's a very high chance, this is one of the closest things to a counter there is in Hearthstone right now. There's a very high chance this goes to two all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Fire is miles behind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because it's Last Hero Standing, because of how Last Hero Standing works, you mm -hmm. build your lineup to win 3-2 a lot of the time. Yeah. And so, just to explain to people who don't watch much Last Hero Standing, uh, you build your lineups quite often to make sure you can do a combination of counters. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get to the situation where Fire will probably win this game, mm -hmm. all things being equal. It might look like Zoo will win, but Zoo tends to run out of steam. Yep. And then Fire has an, a ridiculously difficult game to win yep. in the last match because of Ekop's lineup, the way it faces off against Fires. Exactly. Yep. Um, Fire does have the, the hand within reason that you would want to start with here. You, Cycle these early minions, get get rid of these two drops whilst they cost two. Yep. Cycle into the things that cost more that you want to play when you have the mana to play them later. Thin your deck down and looking good so far. And Eclops got a fairly slow looking start as well. I mean, I guess, I guess Fire has success, uh, like basically what you said, to all, the entire uh, card draw mechanics plus Blizzard plus Emperor. Maybe the Fireball Burn was not ideal because he wants to draw the Burn later, but it's, it's very, very good, yeah. And having uh, fa and facing a, a life tap from Zoo by turn two, um, it's, it's really insane because that's nearly as if you would have deployed a Doomsayer here on the board. Yeah, it's actually yeah. done it for you. And also the two damage is relevant too. Like, you oh, don't yeah. want to go below 22. Yeah. As the zoo, you want to stay on 22 or more because they can just yeah. burn you down in one turn on 21 mm -hmm. without any Alexstrasza messing yep. around. And so you're, you're making him tap less as well. You're hitting him in the face for one. All these little things are all in favor of fire at the moment. Double Doomguard as well. It's also good for you. Um, yeah, knife juggler coming down, attack, attack. That's standard. Um, but just having these strong mechanics at the very beginning of the game, now having access to the loot or the ping, the 2-1, all very strong things. And the fact that Fire's chosen to play Freeze Mage makes the Paladin, the, the, the turn where he didn't play Solemn Vigil, yep. it's a very Freeze Mage play. Yeah. I'm going to draw, play Solemn Vigil now, let you hit me for one turn, and then I'll answer you next turn. Yep. So mm -hmm. the fact he, he plays Freeze Mage pretty well, Mm -hmm. You know, there are mistakes. There's only like two people in the world play Freeze Mage really well. <laughs> oh, he should play the Luthor and Pink now, yeah. He, um, he's hovering a little bit over the ice block. I'm but it, sure. it is interesting that he didn't play that Solemn Vigil play, given that he's playing Freeze Mage. I absolutely, I agree, yeah. Um, definitely um, um, a little bit confusing, but maybe Fire. Yeah, you, you, equi absolutely. you equalized the both decks uh, from, the playing, um, oh. uh, from the way of playing, and I definitely agree, but I think Fire doesn't. So you're playing against Freeze Mage, you have a chance to put an 8-8 on the board, mm. you put the 8-8 on the board and hope. That seems reasonable to me. Well, I think uh, you don't need to hope that much, right? I mean, um, it, it doesn't look like the position is very threatening to Ecop. Uh, I don't think Ecop thinks that he has to hope in this very position, that's what I'm right. saying. And the 8 is just such a good play, and um, yeah, let's see from there. Yeah, he goes for it, not surprised. Hitting this, um, snapping this um, loot order in a very effective manner. Um, yeah, sure. Um, I assume he puts the 8 8 next to the gang boss there on the left, so that if the gang boss spawns any more minions, it doesn't affect his positioning for this um, Defender of Argus later. Right. He wants to buff the Imp Gang boss and the Sea Giant, get the Sea Giant as big as possible, and make sure the Imp Gang boss, if it takes damage, will make more men for him as well. Yeah, I really like the Frostbolt here. Frostbolt on the 8 8. Um, not only uh, does the Frostbolt make sure that um, the 8 damage from the Giant won't hit Fire's face, but it also prepares it a little bit more for Blizzard into Flamestrike turns and such mm -hmm. things. 
Yep, and that's exactly what well, we're going to do. Almost certainly see the blizzard next turn. Oh yeah. And then the turn after, lots of things could happen. He's got. He's starting to get that freeze mage hand where you just plan ahead as many turns as you can see. Mm -hmm. Correct. I mean, we also see that Fire already has access to Alex Trusser, into Fireball, Frostball, Torch, also the Emperor. Um, so if the Emperor, if he can somehow make it happen that the Emperor sticks, getting into this Alex Trusser into Ice Block turn, I mean, then he would be definitely more than fine. So let's see how, how we go. Okay, interesting there that he chose to not worry about Flame Strike as such, and yeah, he could have buffed his Giant to 8-6, yep. for instance, there. Um, do you like that, or...? Well, I guess the giant on 9-6 is still still vulnerable too, so sure. I'm not sure. But no, I agree. I would have probably also buffed the giant, yeah. Okay. More damage from that juggler, and off he goes, so... And Fire having that second blizzard is going to just be able to keep control of this for a while and yeah, this tidy second blizzard, up. Yeah, this second blizzard was very, very important for sure. Is it worth Ekop's time here to try and build his hand size a little so that maybe he can play two Doom Guards in a mm -hmm. turn later? Um, I think you just go for it and just hope. Sure. I mean, what is he supposed to do, right? I mean, I guess just go for it now and just play hope. it. Take the, take your chance and. Yeah, it's six damage after all, and it's also a big minion on the board. And if this Doom Guard doesn't discard the other Doom Guard, it does. Um, he would have been in a very, very good spot from now. Yeah, in, in unfavoured matchups, you sometimes just have to do a thing that yep. looks kind of awkward. Exactly. I mean, he also knows that time is running out, so I definitely don't mind the line he took. The Blizzard now of very big importance because um, the Imgen boss won't spawn another minion, and that's pretty important too. Um, <coughs> also being able to deal with the Sea Giant later with uh, another pink from the hero. Yeah, Fire getting all the pieces together now. And this is why I was saying that Zoo often looks like it's going to win, but actually quite often just doesn't. You know, for, the yep. un, for the uninitiated eye, you look like, all oh, these things against 11 health, how can, that, how can I lose? Mm -hmm. But Freezeway just has all the answers, and every turn is about just drawing one more card towards winning, stalling out one more turn. Every mm -hmm. card in your deck does that. Right. Mm -hmm. And Ekop's lost all of his charge now. Yep. Unless he has a Leroy or something, which I don't know. No, I also didn't see one, and um, I think Fire will simply opt any kind of charge at this very moment. Right. He also already played double Blizzard freezing effect, so that's this. Um, we see a second Ice Block uh, being drawn here, which is pretty important, um, because he uh, now has the ability to, if he only survives one more turn, he has the ability to play Emperor Ice Block into a Lex Trusser Ice Block into a kill. And yes. this is probably also yeah. what we will see here. Yeah, it buys him enough time to build. You want to play the Ice Block down when you're comfortable, yep. and you want to play the Emperor when you're not going to die, yeah. Yep. Get the two together, all your problems are solved. He just has to survive this one turn. Exactly. We have kind of a small screen bug here, but we will be able to just anticipate what's happening. Um, yeah, we can see the, the, the hovering yeah. overs, but we're not sure where the cards are. And What? Take up one? <laughs> what? What happened? Okay, yeah, but uh, either Ikob, one, Ikob one, we missed it, we missed it, but Ikob won, so that's uh, How did pretty good. Um, I, I don't know, uh, was power ramming enough? I didn't see it. I mean, we, we just missed the last two turns, right? So we could. Sure. Um, but yeah. So okay, so we thought Fire had that, but he Ekop found a way, and Ekop is into the final of Insomnia, the True Silver Championship three, and Raven is back. And what did you think of that, Raven? Yeah, it was. Um, it was just a. Uh, I just think the lineup was just a real, real problem for mm. Fire. The way uh, like Ecop's e lineup just went up against Fire's, even if there was the win with the freeze mage against the zoo, that yep. was like mm. the easy match, right? And yep. then he had like yep. the Thune Warrior to try and deal with. So exactly. Right. It was, you know, we, we were even said like that uh, when we were watching the match downstairs, like all the players are sat around watching. It's like as soon as Fire lost the game beforehand, it was like yep. Yep. we already think Fire's lost the set because the lineup freeze mage yes. is going to struggle so much. Mm -hmm. and I don't really think there was too much Fire could have done about it. Yeah. Yeah. Once mm -hmm. that game was lost, um, did did people down there? What do they think about not banning the warrior out? Given that there's freeze mage in mm -hmm. his lineup. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, like we discussed the warrior. And it was mainly just it was just a tough one. Like fire had like the shaman or the warrior to ban right, and the shaman mm -hmm. is a problem against yep. his lineup as well. So it was just I, th I think the main thing is fire's done extremely well to get yes. this far. Yeah, I agree. But I feel like the lineup had a lot of holes in it because yeah. it, if you struggle between banning warrior or shaman, mm -hmm. then 
you've got a problem in tournament format at the moment in Hearthstone, right? But also the most yeah. popular classes. As a, I mean, I've done I've done this in tournaments myself. As a stronger amateur player rather than a pro player, mm -hmm. if you bring a lineup that has some holes but also has a little bit of gamble to it, mm -hmm. you can take down players that maybe are better than you, and that's what he's done today. You know, just put a bit of gamble into your lineup. Level the playing field a little tiny right. bit and right. you know, take a chance. And eventually, you do get found out if you do that. And I think as well, there's something to be said for actually just taking decks that you like to play and have practiced yes. a lot with. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you take decks that might be the best lineup, but you're not comfortable with those yep. decks for whatever reason, then that can actually be worse than having a weaker lineup because you just don't, you know, you're not comfortable enough to play the yep. game. But congratulations to Ecop. He's going to make it to the final, so that's fantastic for him. Looking yep. forward to that one. But before we do get into that, uh, into the next game. Sorry, we're just going to go to a short break while we set that up to so the second semi-final to find out who is going to face E-Cup.